Yo, what's up, guys? Terrell here on Terrell Game Vlogs. Yes, I know I'm wearing the shirt with the holes in them. I really don't give a fuck because it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't really give a shit. Uh, I'm really here just to give you a first impression of Bakemon and Gatari. Uh, I'm watching it on Crunchyroll. They're kind of releasing an episode a week, like every Friday and shit. But obviously, I'm watching it on like a Sunday morning. So. Um, this was the show that gets a lot of hype and a lot of respect. And everyone's like, oh my god, I gotta watch this. Blah, 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 blah. And I think the DVD is being released, I think, is it next month or November? I don't really remember right off the top of my head. I think it's either October or November for like $150, but I'm not fucking with that, mainly because it doesn't have a dub on it, and it's $150. I'm like, you got to give me some price points. So I'm just watching it on Crunchyroll as it comes out. Uh, and I've seen the first two episodes, and I know uh, Kyo Chan or Emo Uchiha, I think is the actual YouTube name. Uh, is doing episode reviews of it since it's coming out every so I'm just gonna get my first impressions of the first two episodes uh, From what I understand the premise is like this dude named Aragi is just helping chicks with like supernatural problems By taking them to this dude named Mr. Oshino apparently Hanikawa, which is the first girl we see him talking to apparently she's she has some issues with a cat uh, Kyle Ken caught this in the fucking episode review. I didn't even catch it in the first episode. Apparently, like, the chick has, like, a cat shadow. And the second chick, and Sin Jonah Har, which is the one they just, she, he just finished helping, had this issue with weight and crabs. And, um, so far, the weirdest thing about, th this, this show has a very weird mix with me. It's very intriguing, purely just based on the fact that it's very stylized. There's a lot of shit coming at you at once. The, the cameras, I mean, it, it jump cuts like every fucking other two seconds and some shit. It uses different styles. The shit, the, nothing ever looks the same in this damn anime except for the what the fuck factor. Um, I'm very weird with this show. Uh, the first episode didn't necessarily leave the greatest impression on me because Honey Cobb would seem cool, but obviously I don't think she was in the main portion of the story. And fucking Sinjo Hara was being a bitch. I mean, for God's sakes, her introduction section is her threatening this boy with a whole bunch of scissors and shit because he caught her randomly when she fell out the stairs and figured out that she was weightless because she felt like a fucking feather when she grabbed her. Um, it's I mean, personally the first episode wasn't necessarily amazing for me. It didn't it intrigued me purely just off of premise slash. It didn't, it didn't intrigue me through characters, I'll put it that way. It intrigued me through just seeing shit. Like, the, whole, the most interesting thing about Sinjo Ahar in the first episode was the fact that she was, like, carrying a shit ton of school supplies. She was weightless, and then she, like, stapled a man in his mouth for, for that. And honestly, the weightlessness is a metaphor. And the second episode really has now sold me on finishing this show now because apparently, like, every problem the girls will, these people will have are like problems that relate to kind of like deep emotional kind of like I guess you could say thought provoking issues in their lives because the crab was more of a metaphor about her mother and the fact that instead of dealing with the emotions that came with the issues with her mother she decided to just shed it off like weight so she became weightless she cheated essentially she had she met the fucking crab the crab made her weightless and she lost all emotion that's why she's kind of like a heartless bitch I don't know. Now, a lot of people seem to like Sinjo Ahara, so something tells me she's not going to lose all of her personality for that, but... Because the end of the episode makes me seem like she's going to be a nice person now, but I'm not... I'm kind of wary of that, just on based on premise. Uh, my friend TJ originally, I think, got it, like, looked at this show when it first came out, when it was first airing, and he said he fucking loved this shit. I didn't bother with it, because it just looked weird as fuck, and I wasn't really into watching seasonal anime back then. Um, we'll see how it goes. It, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, honestly, I, I think people should check it out on Crunchyroll purely just because it's interesting enough and the style is very different. Like, if you're looking for something different, this is different. Um, the Rocky's cool, and I do like the fact that it's mixing supernatural shit with real life stuff, which I guess the stylization of the episodes is what kind of contributes to that because like Aragi himself used to be a vampire and has like vampire like traits in the sense that he's he can heal quicker than normal people I don't know about anything about like fighting ability but I from what we see I know he can heal fast and I don't 
and apparently Hanikawa has a shadow of a cat. I don't know what metaphor you can use for that. Actually, that's the other fun part about the show. You can kind of guess what the metaphors are. The weight, shedding weight is kind of like shedding emotion, shedding... I kind of like that one. I don't know what the cat's supposed to mean. Because it's, it's not even like it's affecting her life. And that's the other thing. Like, none of these issues are affecting their lives. Like, you could have lived your life weightless. Mind you, the metaphor is what makes that thing a big issue. Same thing with Hanikawa. It's like, you, you have a cat shadow. It's not that big of a deal. It's not like you are a cat. You have a shadow of a cat. But mm, maybe that's a metaphor for something. I don't want anyone to spoil it. I don't fucking want to know. And then this little girl that I know apparently can't find her home is the preview for the next episode. Like, this chick who can't, who always seems to get lost. Meaning... That one seems a little bit simple, too. Like, maybe she just chooses to get lost. Maybe she doesn't want to return home. Maybe she's denied. Maybe she's just, you know, lying to herself or some shit. I don't know. Uh, but, I don't know. For the first two episodes, it was pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to watching more. Um, and we'll just see what happens. So, uh, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I'll probably leave the link to watch the first episode of Country Roll because it should be... I know it's free, so... Take a shot at it and tell me what you think. And, uh... Video responses is always welcome. So this has been the, the vlogs again from your boy Terrell. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for the over 1,000 subs on this fucking channel. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Uh...